Debugging your code can definitely be a huge headache, especially when you're dealing with logical errors, but you can make your suffering more bearable with the many tools that Studio provides to help you in your debugging process. And we'll be taking a look at all of these tools. While there is no absolute right or wrong way to debug, I can definitely say that you can improve your debugging efficiency by taking advantage of the debugging tools in Studio, otherwise you're capping your debugging potential. The first and most common way people debug code is by using print statements. They are fast and easy to implement, and you can use print statements to check to see if a particular area in your code has executed. You can use print statements to double check values and ensure they are what you'd expect during runtime, and so on. But print statements are pretty basic, and you aren't able to insert print statements in the middle of, let's say, playtesting your game. You have to stop playtesting, edit your code, and then go back and playtest the game again and try to find the area that the bug was occurring in your game. An example here that I have is just some basic code where I have two print statements that just notify me that a particular function has successfully executed. So if I go and run my code, what you're going to see is that function two first executed and then function one executed, which is what I would expect given how this code is designed. Now, if you want more control and extra features over your debugging process, then this is where you're going to have to use breakpoints. A breakpoint is simply a little area that you can mark in your code that you would like the game to pause or a particular script to pause its execution when it hits that breakpoint. And then you can walk through the process of executing the code after the breakpoint step by step. Breakpoints also allow you to see what values are in every single variable in a particular scope. You can use them to see the order of how your code executes and a bunch more features. So to add a breakpoint into our code, all we need to do is go to the left-hand side of our script where all of the numbers appear for each line of code. And you could see this little transparent red dot that is notifying us that we can add a breakpoint on any one of these lines. So I'm going to add a breakpoint on the calling of function two. Here I have my brand new breakpoint. And when I go and run my game, currently this breakpoint is active. So it's going to pause execution and it's going to throw me back into this script to start walking through the execution of this script. So if I hit run here, as you can see, it hopped me back into my script. And now there is a yellow arrow here indicating that we have stopped right at this function call. And now we have to start using the debugger to start stepping into, stepping over or stepping out of code. Now breakpoints have a ton of settings. So if you right click your breakpoint, you can see this little menu pop up where you can disable, delete, or edit the breakpoint. If you edit the breakpoint, you're going to see some settings appear that give you some extra features with your breakpoint. For example, this breakpoint will only execute or stop your code when a certain condition is met. You can have your breakpoints spit out a message when they're reached. You can have your breakpoints continue executing without halting a particular script like we are right now. So that means you could use a breakpoint as some kind of print statement where you can have it print out a value, but continue executing and not pausing your game. So as an example, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit my breakpoint and I'm going to spit out a log message. Now, the format of the text that needs to go in here is going to be the exact same as a print statement. So we need to put quotations around any text we want to enter into the console. So I'm just going to say that this breakpoint was reached and then I'm going to enable continue execution. I'm going to save that. As you can see, the shape of my breakpoint has changed and now it has become a log expression. So if I go and run my game, it's going to bypass that breakpoint, but it is going to print and say that the breakpoint was reached. But of course it didn't pause or halt the execution inside of my script. Now we can also add a condition to our breakpoint, meaning this breakpoint will only trigger when some kind of condition is met. So for example, maybe I only want this particular breakpoint to trigger when let's say key number one inside of my table is equal to a value of 20. So what I can do here is I can simply type out the name of my table and refer to key one. And this has to be equal to 20. So this is going to be a Boolean expression right here that's going to evaluate whether or not we should encounter this breakpoint. So I'm going to save that. And if I run the game, what you're going to notice is that, well, it didn't log anything. It didn't print anything because that condition was not met. It wasn't true. But if I go ahead and swap key one to 20, and then I were to run my game, as you can see, the breakpoint was reached because that condition evaluated to true. 
We also have the option to remove the breakpoint once it has been triggered, and then we can also define some custom contexts for our breakpoints. So maybe if you had a module script and you only wanted to execute code in it, particularly for the client or maybe only for the server. This other context here of edit is specifically for debugging plugins, which you're not gonna have to worry about, but I'm just going to leave this at the default of all contexts. And then I'm going to disable continue execution because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another breakpoint just randomly up there because I wanna show you another cool thing with breakpoints and that's the ability to add or edit breakpoints while you're in the middle of debugging. So if we go and run the game, we're going to first hit this breakpoint and we're going to end up at the basically reading of this function. So if we step into that, there we go, we created that function and then eventually you're going to hit this breakpoint down here. Now the cool thing is that I can edit this breakpoint while I'm in the middle of debugging. So if I don't want this to say this particular message or if I don't want to check this particular condition here, I could just get rid of that. And then I could print something else saying like, I don't know, I'll just say hello and then I'll save that. And now when I continue stepping through my code, what you're going to see is it prints hello. I was able to edit the breakpoint in real time. Good luck trying to do that with print statements when you're in the middle of executing your code. Now, sometimes you might not want to have a breakpoint execute immediately. In that case, this is when you would go and you would hit your breakpoint again, which would make it hollow, indicating that this breakpoint is currently disabled. It's not active. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to I'm going to disable both of those breakpoints. And then I'm going to just create a, a while true do loop. And I'm just going to constantly execute my function. Actually, let me get rid of that breakpoint and let me just slap a new one there. And I'm just going to constantly execute function two and I'm going to yield every, let's say two seconds. Now, sometimes we may not want to execute a particular breakpoint immediately. Sometimes we might want to wait until we know we're gonna to get to the area where the bug is going to occur or whatever. So that's where we can go to the view tab and we can open up the breakpoint window, which is right here. And this is going to pop up this particular window. Let me just slap it down here. And it's going to show you all of the breakpoints that are currently in all of the scripts in your game. It'll show you whether or not that breakpoint's enabled or not. And you can simply click on it if you want to enable that breakpoint or disable it. You can enable all breakpoints or disable all from this button, or you can also delete all breakpoints from this button. But what I wanna show you here is that if I go and run my game, and while my code is executing, right, we're not encountering that breakpoint, but let's say I want to go ahead and enable the breakpoints. I'm going to tick that to true, and there we go. We now have hopped into the debugging process because that breakpoint was triggered once we enabled it. I'd also like to explain these three buttons a little bit more. Step into basically means you're going to be stepping into a particular scope. So if you don't want to bother with stepping into the scope of something, maybe it's the scope of a function or an if statement or whatever, then you can use the step over function instead. So for example here, if I don't want to go into function two, I just want it to do all of its execution and skip having to continually stepping into different stuff, then I can just hit step over and as you can see, function two executed fine. And then now I'm at my yield statement. And then I can continue stepping to the next iteration of this loop. So I step into, I yielded, there we go. Now we're checking the condition of the while loop. We're gonna step into that. Then we're back into our function. If this time I decide, you know what? I wanna step into function two, then I can hit step into. And now we have made it into function number two. We're going to uh, assign a value to our variable B. We're going to print to the console. And now I have another opportunity to step into another function. So let's go ahead and step into that. Now I'm going to be assigning the value of two to A, and then I'm going to print function one executed. We're going to continue stepping into, stepping into, and then we're going to hit all of the end statements once we return out of all those functions. And then boom, now we're back to task.wait. Once we step into that, it's going to yield for two seconds. There we go. Now we're back at the beginning of the while loop. Now let me go ahead and demonstrate the step out function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step into function two, but let's say I don't want to be in here any longer. So you know what? I'm just going to hit step out and it did all of its functionality, executed everything, and then it came back to where function two is called and now I'm back at the yield statement. So that's how you can use these three buttons to either step into a scope, step over a scope, or step out of a scope. Now the next debugging tool I would like to show you is another menu and you can find it in the view tab and it's called watch. So let's go ahead and open up that menu. 
And this is a very neat and useful menu that allows you to see all of the variables in the current script that's being debugged. In this case, that's my script right here with all these different variables in it. And you can look at all of the different variables. For example, I can see A, I can see B, I can see my functions, and I can see my table, and I'm able to see all of the different values that are being currently stored in all these different variables. I'm also able to hit this button right here and change the scope. So if I only want to see local variables, I can just disable up value and I can see all of the local variables currently, or if I don't wanna see anything, I'm not gonna see anything at all. Or if I only wanna see global variables, I can tick that, and then there's the global variables that are in this script. But the main use of this watch menu is the ability for you to just take a peek at all the different values inside of your variables to just make sure that everything is executing and storing information how you'd expect. That way you can check to see if there's any variables that might be nil when you don't want it to be nil or storing a wrong value when it should be storing a different value. This is very useful for that. Another useful thing with the watch menu is that you can watch different expressions. So for example, I'm going to type an expression here. I'm going to do A plus B. And what you're going to see is A plus B is four. How the heck did it know that? Well, A and B in this current script is two, and B is also two, so A plus B is four. And then I can execute and go through my script, and if A and B's values ever change, this is also going to update because that's what this arithmetic expression is doing. It's just adding those two variables together. And we're not limited to only arithmetic expressions. You could put Boolean expressions in here too. You can put whatever expression you'd want. And as you saw earlier, I added this expression in real time while I was in the middle of debugging, which is even better. But let me tell you, the benefits of breakpoints don't stop there. There's another window we can open in the view tab, and that is the call stack. And what this is going to display, what it says, view the current call stack, it's going to show us basically the order of stuff being executed in our code and what functions are being executed. So um, this one also provides those step in or step over or step out functions. So we can just click those and I'm just going to start stepping into stuff. So I'm gonna step into function two. So now it knows we stepped into function two and we're currently at line 10. We stepped into it from line 18, which is right here. And then we can step in again. We're moving along. We're currently at line 13 inside of function two. And then we step into function one. We can step into that. And now it tells us that we stepped into function one at line 14 inside of function two. And now we're currently at line seven in function one. So this call stack is really, really useful when you need to verify the logic or how things are being executed in a particular order. Because let's say you had some functions executing, but they weren't executing in the right order. Well, how would you know? Well, the easiest way to know would be to just check the call stack, step through your code, go through it one by one, and just take a look at the call stack. Pretty easy. So breakpoints, the watch menu and the call stack are going to be the three main tools that you will utilize during your debugging process to make debugging as easy and efficient as possible. Now there is one more tool that I would like to show you that doesn't have to do with breakpoints, but it's basically, you can kind of think of it as like a prevention tool so that errors don't happen in the first place. And that's going to be the script analysis window. So let's go ahead and open up that real quick. And I'm just going to close out of the other debugging windows. And what the script analysis window does is it basically spits out all of the errors or warnings that was caught by the linter. So for example, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to clean up all these breakpoints, delete all that, and I'm just going to delete all this code. Let's say I had a function and I'm just going to call this function ABC. Let's say it takes some kind of parameter and let's say that parameter has to be a number. Well, let's say I was a little silly and I accidentally passed a string here instead of a number like I was supposed to. Well, if you're in a particular type checking mode, like if you're in the non-strict mode, what you're going to see is that inside of our script analysis window, a warning has popped up saying that the type of string could not be converted into number. And I don't even need to have this script open. This script analysis window will constantly spit out all of the warnings and errors that currently exist in all of the scripts in your game, which is really useful. So anytime that you might change code somewhere, maybe you change code in a module and it might break code elsewhere, it's going to spit out inside of this script analysis window. So you can go through here, select 
the particular one and be like, ah, silly me, I forgot to, I need to pass a number here. So I'll just pass 10 instead, fix that problem. And there we go, the warning is gone. Or let's say you accidentally made another mistake somewhere. Let's say you forgot uh, an end statement with your function. Well, now we're gonna get an error here, expected end to close function, and that also spits out in the script analysis window. So breakpoints, the call stack menu, the watch menu, and the script analysis window are going to be the main tools you should utilize to help debug your code and to prevent mistakes happening in the first place. So maybe you already use all of these tools. And in that case, great, you didn't need to watch this video, but I appreciate you stopping by anyways. Or maybe you didn't know any of these features existed and now you're going to be absolutely mesmerized by these awesome debugging tools. Either way, I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.